Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to be looking at is spears. So I have a simple spear that I made and there's a few different mechanics that go around with it. Uh, the first one is if we throw it out a block, it will drop the item. Now I've tried to get it to spawn an entity that will be on the rotation that it rotates when it hits the block like the projectile but it doesn't seem to want to do that particularly so um, the rotation would always be facing downwards for some reason and I couldn't really have enough time to figure that out and I don't know if it's even possible so with this uh, we have spears and if we hit an entity with it okay we missed that one we hit the block so we got that it has a little bit of knockback and it takes a little bit of damage and took three hits to take that sheep out so we can try that on a cow cows have a little bit more health generally so we can go back to that cow wherever the cow went let's see if i can get that Oop. okay missed that one no. okay we got him let's pick up our spears no. Two. Oh, he's definitely going to die from fall damage. All right. So as you can see, it basically works uh, for the spear and stuff like that. So if it hits a block, then what it's going to do is it's going to drop an item for the spear, and if it draw or hits an entity or player, then what it's going to do is it's just going to um, uh, basically despawn the or use the item. So that's basically the mechanics behind it. Uh, that's the best that I could come up with uh, for spear designs and stuff like that. It's probably the most easiest and compact way of doing it. Um, with my experiments from the entities, it, it did work. It's just it didn't really take rotation and stuff. Even when you hit it onto a block on this face, it doesn't support the directional um, dependencies. So you can't really test for the face that it hits or anything like that, which is unfortunate. But um, outside of that, we can at least have something that will work when it hits something like that. We can just pick up the item. Anyhow, uh, let's go into mCrater and we'll take a quick look how that is all set up. Uh, we have three elements. We have our item, our projectile, and we have the projectile hits block. So this is when it hits a block. We'll start with the item. And actually, yeah, we'll start with the item. and. Uh, we set the texture, uh, we, you can add item states if you want, uh, these are basically um, texture differences based on conditions, I think I've done a video on that already, um, basically you want to give it a GUI name, put it under a creative tab, and then basically set up whatever properties you want for the item to spawn, or basically for the stack size, everything else is pretty much good. Uh, the only other thing, major thing that you need to do is make sure that you have an item use uh, duration. So you want to set this to something like 20 or something like that. That will be like one second. And uh, you might want to set your animation for uh, the item animation. So basically the item animation when they use the item. So I went with a spear one for this one. Uh, we don't have food properties for it. Um, we did need to enable the um range item properties which is in 2023.4 um basically when you enable this you can set your projectile shoot so this would be the projectile item or projectile uh, element that you would basically select you can select other ones for default for arrow or specter spectre spectral arrow um but if you don't have the pro projectile set up already so in in the case you would want to make sure that this is linked up and then you can set any additional um properties that you want for this particular thing uh as far as procedures uh we don't actually have any for this particular item all right moving on to the projectile so we have only two pages that we need to cover here uh, you want to set your required item for the projectile so you basically set this up and then set your projectile model so what i've done is if we go back to the workspace we have a item texture a entity texture and a java entity model for our projectile so if we go into block bench i'll kind of show you how the model needs to be set up for projectiles 
So we need to go to assets, block bench, projectiles, and all these files are going to be provided as well. So as you can see, this is basically the direction that you're going to need to make your projectile and you're kind of facing upwards and in the center. This will make sure that the projectile is um, facing the right way when it's actually shot. So it needs to kind of be facing upwards. So this would be the tip of the hook uh, or the spear up here. And then down below is the bottom. Uh, I think I updated the texture for it, but you know what, that doesn't matter. It's basically the same direction as what we have. Uh, you might also want to make sure that your model is set up for a two sub um, folder system. Uh, the reason being is it helps with the directional stuff for entities and stuff like that. Um, if you have two folders, uh, it's the way that M creator uh, works as well as the rotation of the blocks. Um, as you can see here, I've basically set the hit point for both of these folders to 16 for the pivot point, which is directly in the center of this uh, particular um, actual projectile. So hopefully that helps with um, the thing. Your UV maps over here. As we select it, you can kind of see the different parts of the UV maps set up. So that's important. And they're all assigned the texture. So, okay, just now that we got that part out of the way, it will make a little bit more sense for the entity model. Uh, for rotation, you just don't want any animation for this. You can just uh, set new animation and uh, keep it empty. So once you have your projectile model set up, you can go ahead and select your texture for that projectile model. I have a spear projectile for the texture for this one. And then you want to set your uh, launch action sound, so your projectile sound for when it's shot. Uh, does projectile particles uh, spawn in flight? I've enabled that because it looks a little bit better. And the last thing that I wanted to do was adjust the properties a little bit more. So projectile uh, power, so this is how much force it's going to work. It's One is by default a bow, like a bow. And then the default projectile hit damage. So this is set to 0 0.4. Um, each point is, each 0 0.1 is one heart. Um, by default, 0, 0.0 is one point of damage, so half a heart. So basically what I've done is it deals five hearts with 0 0.4, um, with the value of 0 0.4. And then the um, knockback, what I've done is just set it to one. It could probably have been a little bit less, but I don't really have that ability to go any lower. So it is what it is, unless zero is actually a little bit lower than one, which could be, I don't know, I haven't tested that. And then does particle ignite on, uh, ignite fire on hit. So I think this has to do with um, light on fire when the projectile hits a block. So, uh, for example, if it hits, um, a block, it would basically set it on fire, I guess. I don't know. Uh, for example, no, this does not catch mobs on fire. Okay. So basically I think it's just a visual thing. So when you, it goes through things like lava and stuff, it'll probably set the projectile on fire. I think I'm not sure. All right, so down to triggers, we have the when block hits block or when projectile hits block. And for this, uh, what I've done is just basically spawn a gem because by default, what it's going to do is it's just going to disappear the item, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're using the immediate source entity because that's where the projectile is going to be at. And we're getting the entity position. So basically, you can find those blocks under the... Uh, entity procedures, data, and then it's these three blocks right here. And for the actual procedure for this one, what you can do is you can go to world procedures, actions, and then spawn dropped item, which used to be spawn gem, but it's been renamed. And then what I've done is I've just gone in internal inputs and then selected my item, which will be the projectile or the range item that we created, the item that we made. And then I've basically hooked up those blocks to the immediate source entity. So the immediate source entity ones can be found under the Minecraft components. It's right here. 
and you would just drag that onto the blocks like this. So we'll basically demonstrate that quickly. So we'll go to Minecraft components, immediate source entity, bang, already done. We can just remove the X, drop that on, and then you would do that for the other uh, directions as well. So that's basically the only thing that we need to do. And this will, every time that it hits a block, what will happen is it will spawn a item to give you it back in return. Now you could give it damage and a whole bunch of other stuff. You'd probably have to do that through commands. Um, the thing is with that is Mojang is going to be changing MBT uh, in the f near future. So basically anything that I would do a tutorial on right now with commands is not going to be like <laughs> anything that's going to be working in the future. So um, it's not really worth doing a tutorial on that part because it's going to be a completely different system. Um, but in short, you can use something like MC Stacker, which um, if you go to, uh, we'll just open up the browser here. Uh, let's see, mcstacker.net, I think it is. Yeah, so they have a whole bunch of different versions and stuff. You can go to their um, site and then there is, um, I think there is summon. And then you would go with, there should be one for item, uh, element of PQRSJKHIH. I. So item, and then what you would want to do is you would want to select your item, which you would probably do through here. Uh, by default, it's going to be something like Minecraft egg. What you do is you replace that with your namespace and your um, the the item registry, and then what you would want to do is you would want to set the um, damage, which should be. I'm not sure if there is, uh, you probably have to get a tool set up. So uh, let's see if we can find pick. Okay, it's not gonna give us a, let's see if we can find a diamond, diamond ax or something. Iron bars, iron door. I'm not actually seeing any tools in here. Okay, give me a second, I'll see if I can't find a tool. Okay, so less than a second, and you can basically just assign the, um, what do you call it, the uh, go with a filter, and you basically just filter it out. So I went with diamond axe. You can set the damage here, so we can go ahead and um, do something like this, and then you can basically put your damage on here. So this would be what you would want to do for your command, and then you would basically paste that in. Uh, you can go with a world um, command like this, and you would basically replace the slash, make sure the slash isn't in there, and you would just make sure that the position for this that's being run is the position of the entity, so like this, so we can actually compact this down a little bit more. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna spawn it through uh, MBT, um, but like I said, this will only be working for a while until um, mCreator catches up with a release for the changes that Mojang's working on. And then it's going to be a different format for actually applying damage and stuff like that. I'm not sure how it's going to look. So it's still in early development. So it, it'll be interesting to see what the changes and stuff are. But it looks from what a, the current state is, it's going to be a little bit easier than doing all the MBT like this. So hopefully it will not be as complicated, but we'll see. Anyhow, that's basically it. And um, when you're making sure that your trigger set up, just make sure it's for the block. You could do it for the entity, for living entities and players if you wanted to as well. Um, just remember that the player that basically picks up that item or gets shot with that item will probably end up picking up the item. For an entity, it's not too bad, but another player, they could probably pick up the item and throw it back at you. So <laughs> just keep that in mind when you're actually um, designing something like that. All right, and then you just want to save your element and there you go, you have uh, basically all this. Now all the files we provided in the workspace, I'll update the uh, repository if I don't have a, um, a project paid for it 
for it already, I'll make sure to create one and up upload the files that I used for this particular workspace. Again, everything is in here. So you have the workspace itself, you have the procedure and all the assets that I've used. So the textures for the entity uh, projectile, the item and the models uh, for the projectile as well as the block bench model. So you can get the block bench model here as well. So I'll make sure to provide all that in the zip so you guys can easily get that from GitHub. So outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.